Yeah, God, thank you for the richness of your word and all the people that have been sharing on this series. And thank you mostly for your spirit. And I ask you to bless Lizzie this morning. Thank you for all that she brings to us and the depth of her wisdom and experience. And I ask you to just anoint her this morning and be with her as she shares with us. Amen. Okay, this is from Galatians 5, 22. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is called off for good, crucified. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means that we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. Oh, th thank you, Andrew. So I'm summing up the last, oh, it's been about 10 or 12 weeks, I think we've had on the Holy Spirit. I have listened to every talk again this week. <laughs> so I can recommend them. I'm going to try and refer a little bit to each one. So apologies if I miss um, anyone out. <laughs> But I think one of the things that I've got from this series is I've realised that sometimes I think about the Holy Spirit as being too abstract. And Jesus said he, he went away so he could come and be our friend. And um, that's in John 14, 26. And it says, he will make everything plain to you. And I thought, okay, that's really struck me afresh. He will make everything plain to you. And he will remind you of the things that I've said. And I thought over the years, I've really um, struggled to make sense of some things that God has been doing or doing in my life. And I've thought, you know... <laughs> If I treated the Holy Spirit more like a person, which he is, my friend, in my life, and I'd carried on conversations with him in, you know, just everyday things, then I think I would um, know him better. Because friendships about affection, love, esteem, intimacy, empathy, loyalty, respect, and I've put in here laughter. How much do we enjoy the Holy Spirit being with us? I love this bit in Galatians. It says at the end, this is, this, this is good for me, don't compare yourself with one another. It says, uh, who wrote Galatians? Was it Paul? <laughs> uh, it was obviously not me. It says, um, he says, we have far more interesting things to do with our lives. <laughs> Do you know, but sometimes that's what I'm doing, comparing myself. And if we look on social media, that's all it is a lot of the time. Um, but the last sentence says, it is in the message, each of us is an original. And that's one thing I just really felt the Holy Spirit pressing home for me 
I am an original and unique, and you are original. And the way you relate with the Holy Spirit in your life is different to how I am, because it's my personality, my quirks, how I like to be, how I would relate with my friends will be completely different to the way you do it. Of course, there are things in common, but you need to do it how you are. And that's what we're looking up. Jesus says in John 14, and this is the other bit I like, we will come and make our home with you. Anyone who loves me and obeys my teachings, my father will love them and we will come to them and we will make our home with them. Now, one of my favorite program since I've been here is Scotland's home of the year. I'm saying it like that because she sort of says it like that. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else watches it. You must. <laughs> it's uh, if you like homes and decorations. And uh, one of the questions they ask in there is what makes a house a home? So they're not looking for the best, pristine, most expensive, minimalist necessarily type of home that you get in a magazine. They're looking for a home that reflects the person's or the family's personality. So they're looking for a home that's got, reflects love. They actually use these words. We're looking for a home where love is, where it's furnished and to enhance the life of the people a place that looks really well lived in. And I think I'd just like to ask that question to myself. Is the Holy Spirit really at home in my life? If I said to him, do you feel that you live really well in my life? You know, Abby said, he pursues us. He pursues us and he never, he never stops. And I, I can totally say that. I've been a Christian since I was eight. And some days I feel like it was yesterday that I've learned nothing. <laughs> and God is still pursuing me. Because he wants to make a home. He wants to be comfortable with me. He wants to know me. And he wants to enhance me to be the best that I can be. Um, yeah, I first decided to follow Jesus at eight years old. I was brilliant. My sins were forgiven. And I got adopted into the family with Jesus, the Holy Spirit and Father. And then when I was 18, I was in... Um, Texas. <laughs> it's a long story. And I went to a church and there I heard singing in tongues for the first time. I think your dad said that, um, didn't you, Becky, that it sends shivers down your spine. It was very new then. And I knew that although I'd been a Christian for 10 years, I had huge doubts about whether God really loved me. That was always in my head because I was brought up to think of God with a big stick. And, you know, you had to behave to be loved. So I went down and I got what we would say, I got filled up with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. You know, when Jesus says, out of you will flow rivers of living water. I felt like the Holy Spirit came on me and oh, I just started to flow out. And it was, I actually felt like electric currents. But in my head, I heard my voice going, I'll never doubt that you don't love me. For some reason, some healing, deep healing, um, went on in my heart. And over the years, although I know I'm full of the Holy Spirit, there are times when, I mean, it says in Scripture, the disciples, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. There are times when we can feel God's presence, like the, you know, the young people were saying. So the first slide is being filled with the Holy Spirit means that we've got his love 
You can go on to the next one. Sorry. Go, um, his love being poured into our lives. And it's a bit like a sponge. I'm going to jump here. <laughs> a sponge and soaking and dripping. Um, Alan was saying that the fruit and the gifts, they all kept born in us because of the Holy Spirit living with us. And we get that without measure. This is what this um, passage says in Galatians. It's like he brings gifts into our lives much the same way that a fruit appears in an orchard. And one of the things um, I really feel, if you go on to the next one, yeah, here's some little pictures. I can't remember if I've shown these before. Um, one of the things I feel like I want to be a sponge and um, stay close to him, Jesus. Louise talked, very good talk by Louise, I'm getting there. Louise talked about staying close to Jesus. And one of the reasons I feel is, is that I want to, when people bump into me, they get a splash of the Holy Spirit on them. They, get, they bump in to a bit of Jesus. And Tom gave that amazing talk on um, art and everything. Now, I'm not arty, but I do you like fiddling around with things? And um, here are some of the things that I've done where I'm trying to, and Rupert said this, so I'm on four now, uh, Rupert said that we put, when we bump, people bump into us, we can put a seed in them. And some of these things are about putting seeds in them. So up at the top is an angel. That's the most um, popular one I've done. So we had a friend who had a button factory, and he used to give me and I was part of a little group I ran we used to give us white buttons and we I, it's meant to be an angel you probably can't see it's meant to be an angel and we used to put them in little bags and put a little verse from the message because it makes it sound very uh, normal and then we go out and give them to people you'd be surprised everybody wants an angel in a bag and in the summer, we used to go to the park and put them out on a tree, probably have a hundred of them. In an hour, they'd all be gone. People walking through the park, wanting one. And, um, you know, the word of God is powerful and it's a seed. And who knows? I mean, one lady took it for a friend of hers who just lost her child, a baby. And she said, oh, she just loved that. She'd be able to put it on her Christmas tree at Christmas and remember. Then um, the other one is uh, stones. I used to paint stones with little symbols on <laughs> and put them out. And that's also in um, at parks or festivals and invite people to come and choose one. And then I give them a prophetic word. I say to them, you know, God loves you so much. He wants to say something to you through that symbol that you picked. And it's just put, you know, a very simple way. And the, last, the other one is flowers with verses attached to them. I used to do a lot of um, going around old people's homes. I don't know what the proper word is. Senior residences. <laughs> That is such a brilliant way, like on Mother's Day or something, taking flowers and giving them one. And so, uh, I used to give them two. So here's one for you and here's one for someone visiting. Just little ways you can put things into people's lives. Now, that's the sort of thing I like, but that might be like, oh, my gosh, I would never do that. No, but what could you do? What are the ways? Ask the Holy Spirit, how could you be creative um, through me? Um, I think the Holy Spirit helps me represent Jesus as well. Now, one, I like telling my story. So one night, it was a night, me and Alan a bit late home from a meeting, and we cut across town. 
and we saw two lads, they were actually drunk, and they were on skateboards and leaping around and everything. And smash, they went headfirst, didn't they, through an optician's window, the huge window, smashed. One of them got out fine. The other one dragged his arm as he came out and was completely, you know, cut to smithereens. So there was no one around, so we pulled up. The um, one friend ran off, because <laughs> he thought he was in trouble. The one with the skateboard was like crying and everything. So me and Alan said, we'll take you up A&E. This is on a Saturday night. I don't know, a nurse, you all know, Saturday night in A&E. So um, we had a babysitter at home with our kids, so we rang them. And we took them up the hospital and he got more and more distressed as we got there. He was, he was obviously well known to the police and he was homeless and he was well known to the hospital. He said, they don't like me there, I'm not going in. So um, Alan, we agreed Alan would go home and I would go in with him. So I went in and for the next few hours, I sort of sat with him, kept, he kept panicking, but I kept just keeping him calm and talking. I was thinking, if this was my son, I've got two, if this was my son, what would I want a stranger to do for my son? So I got to know him quite well. He was also called John, like my son. And um, eventually we, after everything scanned, he got in to be sewn up. And um, he wanted me to hold his hand, so I did. This is a bit of an aside. The police arrived. Is there any policemen here? <laughs> Good. Uh, the police arrived, and um, I heard them talking outside. They and they did know him. They said I heard them saying, "Well, we've got him now. We can get him for breaking and entering to the opticians." So they came in, and they obviously thought I was his mum, and started saying, "You know, they actually weren't that nice to him," and. Um, I said, excuse me, um, I was, I'm the witness. My husband and I saw it happen, and this is what actually happened. And the two, two police went outside, and I heard them say, oh, well, we can't get him now, because she's far too normal. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't a great introduction to a different world, and um, so, yeah, so after all that, after about three or four hours, we finally were leaving, and I managed, we got a friend who works in a homeless centre, so we rang him and got him a bed to take him to. But, and this is the interesting thing, on the way out, one of the A&E nurses came up to me, and she said, excuse me, she said, before you go, can I just say something? A&E on a Saturday night is just hell on earth because people are coming in drunk and we are just rushed off our feet. She said, everybody in this A&E department has noticed the effect that you've had on him because we know him and there's been a peace and a calmness which we've never seen in him. And she said, I just want you to know we're all grateful. And I thought that was a really in depth thank you, Father, for her comment, because it showed me we think we're having no effect. We think no one else is watching. But the Holy Spirit is working through us, bumping in to other people and noticing. So, um, yeah, put your seeds out. Um, what's the next one? The next picture, I think, is... I can't read that. What's it say, Alan? Does it say about God's love being poured out? I thought I'd written them all down, but anyway. I think it says about God's love being 
poured out. Let's have the next one. <laughs> so, what am I doing to heighten my awareness of him? Now, I am, I, you know, I, I'm very simple. I have tried, I think I said the other day, to, I'm not great at doing meditation, not great at doing long prayer sessions, I get bored in the middle, um, but I do like to chat. Anybody knows me, knows I like to chat, so I chat to God. And over the last few years, I have developed chatting about things like programs that I watch on TV. So I was watching The Tower this week, which I really enjoyed. So when I'm in my sort of sit-down prayer time, I'll chat to God, Holy Spirit, about what, oh, I'm really enjoying that program, really liking this. We'll have a little chat about it. We're thinking about redecorating our house back in Southampton. I like to go, Holy Spirit, what do you think will be some good colours? Can you persuade Alan to let me have some? <laughs> I would like, it does, I tell you what, guys, wives, if your husband <laughs> is not keen on something, then this is a good thing to say. I don't know if I've said this. Say to him, if I pray about it and it happens, am I allowed to have it? <laughs> so I really wanted a new table. And in my, you know, I was chatting with the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, I really want a new table. Alan's only told me I can have it if A, it costs nothing, <laughs> and B, um, it comes quickly. So I go out in my garden, and my next door neighbour, who's a little Liverpudlian, she goes, Lizzie, Lizzie, you don't want a table, do you? <laughs> this is literally like half an hour after saying to Alan, if I get one, can I have one? And um, he, was on, he was in a hurry, so he said yes. So by the time Alan came back, me and Joan had lifted this huge table, which we've still got, over the fence into my house, because she wanted a table from her daughter. It was all thing. Alan comes back, I'm like... <sighs> You know, I call that letting the Holy Spirit in on your life. And he likes, he likes to have fun and enjoy it with you. He likes to poke fun at Alan. So, um, I'm sure. So, look for him um, in unexpected places. Um, Sean Bolt says, and I'm not sure if that's the one that's up there. He says, revelation is progress. Progressive, God starts sentences in the beginning of our lives that he finishes in later years. He is constantly weaving. He's got his prophetic into us, but I think he's constantly weaving into us. When I was eight and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit the first time, um, I was brought up in the Brethren, so I was very good on my Old Testament stories. And one of them was, is it Elijah with all the ch chariots or Elisha? Elijah? Thank you. Um, I used to say to God all the time, God, oh, I'd love to see your angelic hosts. Oh, I'd love to be able to see in the spirit world what your angelic's doing. And about 15 years ago, um, I guess you and me, Alan, had our first experience of angels appearing in the house. I mean, seeing them, because they're around all the time. And I was a bit perplexed at first. I said, why is this happening, God? And the Holy Spirit said to me, because you've been praying it for years and years and years. He said, did you not think I wouldn't listen? Did you not think I wouldn't listen? 
Oh, he's waving at me. So that's 20 minutes. Um, so I just want to say, can you just take some time this week and ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that you asked for that you never really expected to see? What's he going to remind you that you wanted? You know, it might be a sofa. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> There's something that you've been asking for for a long time that you've given up on. Ask it again. And what Rupert was saying, I don't know, I love that bit about he said, okay, so you've done everything that you can do, now watch what I can do. And I think the thing is, it's about saying, Holy Spirit, will you show me, will you do it, and then I'll walk into that space. So um, I've got this picture of, you know, the boat that went out on the, the lake and the storm came, and the disciples were shouting, you know, come and calm it down. And I felt what God's saying. If you're in that situation where you feel there's a storm in your life and it feels out of control, maybe it's been going on for a long time or just a short time, lie down in the boat. Don't get up. Don't shout. Lie down in the boat. Then as calmly as you can, tell him what you need. Tell the Holy Spirit, this is what I need. Because it says the Holy Spirit pleads on our behalf. And when our spirits don't really know how to express things to the Godhead, he will do it for us. So maybe you want to speak in tongues with it. But tell him what you need. And then tell him you're going to wait and you're going to watch for him to do something, and then you'll move into it. And just put it out there and see what he does, and um, see if we get some stories. So, slowing down. Okay, go to the next one. Oh, yeah, keeping your heart whole. I've spoken about some of the struggles I've had in the past. Staying close to God is keeping my heart whole. And um, I won't really talk much about that, but we're all wounded through living in life. He's, I don't think the Holy Spirit is trying to make us whole on any one particular day. He just wants to be in our lives, loving us, helping us heal our wounds, helping us on our journey. It's okay to be wounded, is my, because you will get there. Right, next one. Oh yeah, that was Melissa's talk on reading the Bible. I loved that. It was about, um, and Rowan Williams, I found this quote that... Christians read the Bible not as a document from history, but as a world in which they enter so God can meet them. I have to admit, before I listened to Melissa, I was feeling quite uh, fed up and a bit bored with reading the Bible. I was doing it because I had to. And listening to her talk made me realise I actually need to read it like the words are coming off the page to me, that there'll be something there that I can get from him, talk to him about, and engage with him. And um, I just think slowing down, slowing down, we find that so hard. I'm so distracted, particularly we've had a lot of visitors I'm so distracted sometimes. I don't take time to just slow down and listen and focus. In the prophetic group, we've had a challenge this summer to slow down and try and notice what God's doing around you. Because often things are repeating in our lives, maybe in nature, um, or just things that we hear or see, but we don't 
take notice of it. And I wonder if that day that Moses walked by the burning bush and heard God speak and it changed his life, had he seen lots of burning bushes before? Aren't they quite common in a desert where things catch fire? Was he just in that place where he slowed down enough that he noticed? And I really feel there's something about noticing. Have a little think. What is, it's probably what's annoying you. <laughs> so at the moment, I am very annoyed by seagulls because <laughs> they are so noisy and they've been waking us up really early. And then we went to this. Um, we went to a Scottish network thing. And did I t- mention this? We were in this Scottish network meeting, and during the time there, this doesn't, it's not, 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 not. So we were all like, oh, someone wants to come in. So the people who are, own the church were. Um, opening the front door, no one there. They open all the doors, they thought maybe someone's locked in the toilets. Then they've got a safe, I don't know how they've got a safe. They've got a safe, so they got the keys out in the safe in case someone was locked in the safe. Still this knocking went on. And then somebody laughed and said, oh, it's a seagull. It's on the roof, because they're in a, like a, what do you call them? You know, um, it's knocking. Would it stop knocking? And the Holy Spirit just said to me, Yes, I am knocking and I am trying to get into my church, but I want to come in a fresh way. And I think we've had these three months or whatever, and there's been a lot of inspiration, but I think what he's trying to say is, I want to come into my life, in your life, in a different way, and I want to come in the church life in a different way. I want to build on what you've already experienced, but I want to come in. So I'm going to jump the thing on dreams, because hopefully Bella might um, do that. I'm going to just go jump down to the aeroplane picture. Right. Now... Because when I, you know, because like I do see the angelic, I do um, do like to do quirky things in the Holy Spirit, I need to keep safe. I need to know how to be safe. And, um, And I've got a thing here. I'm not a pilot, but I've got a friend who is. And they say that when there's a storm you can lose your spatial awareness. You don't know. You think you're flying the right way up, but actually you're flying upside down and you can crash, and that frequently happens. If you just use your gut instincts, you can end up crashing. And um, they say you've got to look at the gauges and the instruments. And I think Heavenly Father has given us some gauges and some instruments. And um, we need to stay close. I've got, we need to have wisdom. We need the gift of wisdom. Proverbs 19, 20. We need to pray about what we hear and do. We need to read scripture. And I need you guys. (laughs) I need people in my community. I need people to go, Lizzie, you've just gone a little bit too far off off now I need you to come back or I'm not really sure about that what you're saying can we talk about it I need a conversation I need community and that's why I stay in church community I loved what Bella said Um, conflict (laughs) you know church community is about conflict but it's also about how to have healthy Uh, relationships and people love you and people be there for you and hopefully people get to know a few people that you can trust and that you can chat with 
And finally, I'm going for, is there border control? Yeah. Um, as we go on to the next phase deeper in our lives with the Holy Spirit, I think he's going to be challenging us if he isn't already. There are some things you can't take with you. There are some things I'm doing now or uh, the way I'm behaving now or practices I'm not doing that I have to leave behind. Because when we went to Nepal the first time, our son said, bring me back a knife. And he wanted one of those big, they have these big curved knives. Now, if we put that in our rucksack and try to walk through passport control, they wouldn't be very happy. They'd say, if you want that knife, you can stay in Nepal. Fine. If you want to go on to England, you have to take the knife out and leave it behind. And that is what I think. We can stay where we are. You can be happy where you are. I can be happy where I am. But if the Holy Spirit is challenging me, what could I leave behind that would take me deeper to him? How could I pursue deeper? then actually I do want to do it. I do want to be moving on, getting closer, knowing him in the deepest parts of my life. I want him to feel at home in me. I want to be at home with him and I want him to be my friend. So let's just close our eyes. I'll finish there. Oh, Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry if we've not treated you um, as a, a friend, someone to know deeply, to know us deeply. I, I just want more of you in my life. And I pray that you have this series that we've done, that you would highlight something to each one of us that would enable us to go deeper with you and for it to spread out into our community. I pray this week that people would bump into us and get a bit of Jesus. Some of that water would splash out of the sponge because we've taken time to sit with you, to develop our relationship with you, for it to be unique for us to remember, I don't have to be like anyone else. I can be me. And you are going to work with me and just show us how much you love us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.